Hi everyone, it's Diana. I'm the host of the Meeting Room podcast, and we plan to make this podcast about IT news, community, and just everything you can discover while getting yourself a cup of coffee. We are from DevPro, it's a company with Ukrainian roots. So as the war started, we decided to start over and adjust our podcast a bit. We're still going to talk about what matters to us and how we can help everyone to go through this time. And today we're going to have a short talk about difficulties we've faced during this time and career opportunities ahead of us with our guest, Max. Today's podcast, we start from Ukraine. I'm currently in Odessa, actually hear an explosion right now. <laughs> And uh, our guest, Max, is going to tell us where he is located at the moment. Uh, hi, Max. It's uh, really great that you're here with us. I just want to know how you've been. How are you doing right now? Where you are? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. First of all, I'm doing fine. Can't really say I'm great, though. But overall, I'm safe and my parents are safe. So that's what matters at this point. Um, currently, I'm in Vif. So I want to start with just, you know, talking about the real life because apparently the life of every Ukrainian have changed since the 24th of February. And um, it would be great if you could tell us a little more about how your daily life got affected and um, were you able to come to the new normal? I know that you had to move from Kharkiv to Lviv and um, tell a little bit more how was that and how are you doing right now? Uh, well, yeah, definitely this is something I've never considered to actually happen in my life, but I had to adapt as fast as possible to make sure I can work um, at a decent level to be able to support my family who stayed in Kharkiv. Uh, surely my life has completely changed. I'm the planning type of guy, you know, I like lists, I like bullets, and most of the time I have an understanding of what I'm doing in the nearest month. Now I, I had to cancel everything and transform my plans into something new, basically, you know, come up with a new plan. My daily life back home consisted with different activities, sport activities, hobbies, which I had to postpone for some time, although now I'm slowly getting back to it. So yeah, I definitely had to adapt to the new normal. I can't say it was hard for me. I'm pretty much a flexible person, but that was definitely a process, yeah. Can you give us an example of your uh, new daily life routine? Like, uh, what exactly did you have to adjust? Well, I don't know, like starting from just, my, you know, physical exercises, you know, finding a new gym, a new trainer. I also take vocal classes and you know, finding a new teacher. That takes time. And uh, obviously, I, I got used to my trainers in Kharkiv. So that was an interesting change for me. So I know that uh, you travel a lot in your life and you recently came back from Mexico. Knowing about the situation, how did it happen that you came back and appeared in Ukraine when the war started? Um, well, that's a very interesting question. That's what actually my friends keep asking me, like, Max, you travel so much and then at this period of life you actually stuck in Ukraine. Well. I really like to travel, but this year, the 2022, I decided that I want to just stay at home and just chill, don't go anywhere, focus on health, nutrition. I had a knee surgery planned for the 26th of February, so when the conversation about the potential war has started, I just, I just didn't want to go. What I would normally do is I would pack my bag and just go somewhere, but this time I decided not to. Well, that was quote unquote an interesting decision, I'd say. I don't really know whether it was for good or no, you know, just staying in Ukraine. But I guess that's going to be a next chapter to explore in my life. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I hear many stories like this, and I guess we just to stay exactly where we need to be to learn what we have to learn, because honestly, I'm the same. Like in any other situation, if it happened like any other year, I would just pack my bag and go. I feel you here, but I've learned uh, so much from being here. So I guess there is a reason for everything. Yeah, same, honestly. I feel it. 
And uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to, to talk to you specifically is because uh, I know that you have recently changed your career path. Many people have this problem at the moment. Some are decided to change a job, some of them stayed without the job and have to look for other opportunities. Let's just talk a little bit more about that and just tell me how did it feel to change your career path from travel team lead to project manager? And especially considering that you've already had some success at your role. Well, I've been around travel during my whole adult life. Um, I do have a master's degree in travel. I've been studying in Indonesia. I worked at the hotel travel agency and basically been leading a travel department for more than three years, maybe even four. In the mid-December, I started working as a project manager for one of our largest projects in DevPro and uh, it just felt right. So if you want to ask me why I did that, well, at some point I have realized that I just don't have enough challenges and I want to expand my managerial experience as despite leading travel team, I was also general manager of a separate business unit called Travel Confirm, um, working with the private aircraft management companies in the US, and helping with outstuffing and parts purchase so it wasn't a technical project either but as i was interested in learning more about software development i decided that it's time for me to do the switch that sounds like a pretty brave decision especially like for some people who like to think a lot and who are used to a comfortable life you know just where everything as they want it to be yeah i guess um sorry i guess at some point i realized that i was too comfortable you know I still have a lot of energy to expand the, you know, my horizons, the professional horizons. So yeah, I just thought that, okay, now to, now it's time to work and, um, and learn something new. So far, no regrets. That's great, but I guess it wasn't an easy path. So tell us a little bit about difficulties that you faced while switching. Um, well, I think that the biggest struggle is a lot of new information and processes I never work with, especially during the first couple of months. I still struggle though, but it gets much easier for sure. I think the hardest part is when there's a bug on production and uh, I have to report it to the stakeholder. Uh, to do that, I need to understand when, how, why, and what actually happened. And in the situations like this, I feel like I'm a four years old learning how to read. <laughs> I'm not sure if they start reading it for, but I think you you understand what I'm talking about. Sure. <laughs> thankfully, yeah, thankfully my team is full of professionals and they understand what I'm going through and they find the ways to make sure I'm on the same page with them. I'm super grateful. Sometimes here yeah, when you feel four years old, maybe you could tell us just uh, the difference, the like maybe a few main differences between your old and current roles. I believe there was something, especially in your soft skills, that you had to change or improve. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think that the main difference is my level of expertise. I know a lot about travel and I can easily negotiate, present, explain, um, shoot some ideas or brainstorm them. But now I'm basically a junior specialist and there's a lot to learn and improve, especially with understanding the technical aspects of the product, which leads to a better communication with the stakeholders, as this is a crucial part of a project manager's job. On top of that, there's a lot of formulas you want to know and graphs, charts, presentations you want to make. The area of improvement is massive for sure. However, I feel like the fact that the people management is pretty similar to my previous role and uh, I'm happy that I actually don't feel stressed when there is some kind of HR related issues. I'm pretty confident in my decisions here and uh, if not, with no doubt, I have a reliable escalation point. It actually sounds pretty optimistic. So let's imagine a situation. The person stands next to you and he or she is really afraid and certain. She or he has like certain success at the role and the person just doesn't know for sure if it's the right decision to change the role, especially at a time that is that much uncertain. What main advice would you give to that person? What would you say? 
That's an interesting case. I think that if I meet someone like this, well, assuming that the person understands what they want to do, what career path they want to change, I would ask two questions. Will you personally become happier? And uh, will you be able to support yourself financially? If both answers would be yes, then despite all the fears, the fear that the person might have, uh, they should go for it, for sure. Yeah, that, that's a good point, you know, because some people, they can just uh, put their life on hold to and wait while the war is over. But it's not always the case, especially that uh, we have so many opportunities on the market, we still do, and we will have even more of them. So it's really reasonable to make that decision when you're actually calm and when you understand what you're doing, but still, it should not stop you from the action. I think that actually all the changes that we have in life is for good. That's that's what I think. Either in the short term or long term, um, you will see the benefits from this change. I remember that at some point in my career, I had to lay off the majority of my team members. And that was a hard moment for me and for them as well. I see right now that they're all of them are doing so great. And uh, for some of them, it was a trigger to change the career completely. So I think the general advice is just don't be scared or afraid. If you think that this will bring you new and valuable knowledge, do it. I understand that, you know, the layoffs, like the situation happened actually a couple of years ago when we didn't have a war, but the current situation shouldn't block you from doing what you really want and passionate about. And again, coming back to the two questions I would ask, like, will, it pers will you personally become happier and will you be able to support yourself financially? If you say yes, then go for it. Well, that's what I also believe in. <laughs> we just need to figure out how to keep living our lives. And since we're talking about the change, many people aren't just changing their careers, whether they want to change them or they just thinking about that. Many of them had to change their entire life. You also had to move to a completely new place, basically start your life over. So my question here is um, how to accept this and how to adapt to changes so i think that all of this is about focus and positivity and maybe like focus on positivity so uh, despite all these harsh events happening think about the stuff you actually need to do and focus on this um i understand that you know finding an apartment transportation for parents new place uh, to buy groceries and you know go for a gym there's so many of new things that you normally don't think about because this is your daily routine but now you have to think about all of this you just cannot lose the focus and be negative towards things that you can handle as it won't bring any value you have to understand that you can completely change the situation around but can change your perception on this reality give yourself a time to process the new information and then start building a new normal. No one says it's easy though, but you know, try not to take stress and board. I think this is just general ideas of what I've been personally doing recently. It helped, at least I wanna think so. Despite changing the fourth apartment over the last two months, I'm, I'm doing fine. <laughs> That's also true, and I really loved what you said about the perception, because uh, it has a great value to just focus on everything that we can change, and I feel like I've started valuing my life even more when I just uh, know that the danger is here and it's real. It just uh, feels so wrong and so surreal not to live my life and not to do what I love to do while I have the time, so it's also the question of you know lessons that this war is giving us when we kind of feel the ground underneath us when we kind of like feel that our inner support and we in a safe place we can then think about building this new reality yeah exactly i completely agree Okay, great. I think uh, we discussed everything that uh, we wanted to discuss today. We tried to keep this podcast short. So, Max, um, thank you so much for coming and sharing and just spending this time with me. Again, thanks for having me. I, it was a pleasure. It was interesting questions. I really didn't think about them before, but now this was a good retro of things that happened over the last two months. And thank you for that. 
Thank you for listening to this podcast. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss a single episode. I hope to see you soon.